Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're having a look at an update to the Conform Object add-on. So I've done a video on Conform Object previously, just to quickly recap that, but there's a link in the description to it. Conform Object allows us to conform, well, one object to another. It's basically like the shrink wrap modifier combined with a lattice, which I showed in a recent video, but it does a lot more besides. So for example, if I click on this object here, so this panel, but with some sort of jack of some description, and shift click here, I can go to conform object, conform the object, and it conforms nicely to it, which is great. But what's more important than that is that it has loads of options, including gradient effects. So for example, if I come here, we can see that this what's meant to be a cylinder has actually been affected by this transformation. And if we don't want that, I can just drag that down so that we get it less. And you could affect how much it's affected. For example, I could have it here so that this front bit is relatively flat, but this bit conforms to the sphere. So this is really handy. In this instance, I probably want this to be about here. So the end of this has not been affected. You can also do things like move it around, which is really nice. So for example, if I come here, I could move this up in the Z axis. So something like that. And even though this conforms or creates an error, we can then fix it with our rotation, which should be on the X. So something there. So we can sort that out. We might have to play around with our gradient a little bit more. Okay, so this is really handy. I'm just gonna bring that back to zero and that to zero. Now it does lots of other things as well. That was very quick, but it's really handy if you want something put onto an object and you want to be able to control how much it deforms. As I say, it does loads more. But there is a slight issue with this. And that is that that version over here was done with an object where it was all boolean together and those booleans were applied. Whereas if I have these objects separately and I want to keep this non-destructive, so let's press control and plus, and then I'm just gonna H to hide that and H to hide those. And then we can form object here. So conform object. This has a bit of a problem. It doesn't work as well. Let's just get that proximity up. And you can see here, we get an issue. I can't actually control a lot of this, look, even if I bring this back, because where the booleans are working, the parts that make up the rivets, are causing some deformation. Same around here, because the parts that are the booleans aren't shifting with our conformed object. So this causes us a problem. The other thing that's annoying about it, I'll come back to this one, is that once it's done, it's done. We have a conform modifier here, but it doesn't really give us any options. So what we have to do is come here, unconform the object, shift click, and then conform the object if we want to get this menu back to be able to tweak it. Now the update, which is gonna change this, is now set as an experimental feature. So you're gonna to have to activate this. So edit preferences, come to conform object, and you're gonna to have to click this go experimental button. That's really important, otherwise you won't have this option. But once you do, so I'm gonna do the same thing. We've got all of these objects separated so you can see that I'm not doing anything weird. I'm gonna control and plus to use ball tool again. And then once again, H to hide that and H to hide that. But now with these modifiers on the stack, what we can do is shift click, click here and add conform object modifier instead of just doing the conform object. Now we don't get our menu over here. This means that instead we get our menu in our modifier panel and it's got all of the stuff that we had previously. I can still do things like my gradient effects from the start and the end. So I can reduce that, let's go there. But you'll notice this is not being messed up by those rivets being separated objects. Let's just zoom in so we can see that. So you can see how well this works now that we've got this as a modifier. So that's really handy. The other thing that we can do with this, because now this is constantly working, we don't have the option to move this around. We can just move it around manually. So I can just G and Z to bring it up and then I will have to come to the side and then R to rotate it around to get it perfectly in place. But we can still do all the standard things like have a little offset to bury it in a little bit. So this makes it much easier to play around with this. And importantly, I can do all my other modeling and then come back to this and change it at any time. Now, what makes this so powerful is because this is, well, a modifier and it's on the stack. As before, where I had to apply everything, here, everything is still editable. 
So if I get our Boolean cube, so that is the rivets, and I make these visible again. So this, just so you know, this is using the modifier list add-on. It's in the extension warehouse. Just go to extensions, search for modifier list, and you get this cool way of just making these appear and disappear without having to search through all of your Booleans. But if I select this and then just G to move it, I can move the rivets. So I can change them however I want, which is insanely handy just to be able to edit things as I want. So this gives a load of options that for me is a total change to how I can actually use this modifier and it makes it infinitely more useful. So thanks to Mark Kingsnorth, the creator of this. It's great where creators don't rest on their laurels and keep updating their add-ons to make them even better. And for me, and the way that I use this to add iconography to curved shapes, for me, this is well worth the price of this add-on. I will just mention that Mark has a number of other add-ons. For example, Flowify, which is godly in what you can do with it. Again, links to the videos in the descriptions for that. And there's also another one called Mesh Materializer, which does a similar thing, but again, works in a different way. I'm gonna cover that in a later video. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you know when that video is coming. If you did find this useful to know about, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't used Conform Object before and you want to have a look at what it does in more depth, have a look at the other video. It's basically exactly the same functionality, but now you can do it in this panel here and it just makes things work a little bit more nicely. I hope to see you in the next video and have a great day.